On this episode, we're headed to Missouri to meet up with Jason's good friend, Marty, to do a little bit of trapping. Jason arrives at Marty's house and is greeted by a trusty old friend, Jax. Here, show the camera what's in your mouth, Jax. Let's stick it out there. Jason and Marty waste no time going to check it on traps already set. It looks like Jason and Marty have found a red fox already caught in a trap. Red foxes have long legs, pointed triangular black ears, a pointed snout, and long bushy tail with a white tail tip. All right, we're out here with Marty. Uh, fourth and fifth check of the day, a nice little red fox. What's your plan to found, Marty? It's a beautiful red fox. I'm definitely excited to remake this set and, and see what we catch next. Everything loves to smell red fox, coyotes, bobcats. We're just here in a crossing. A little pinch point that funnels everything down. Don't don't miss setting these spots because they're absolutely killer killer spots. You're never going to complain for a nice little red fox. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. well for All right, we'll let you do the uh, the work here. Get that disc back. We'll make set. All right. I use peat moss and dry dirt. Uh, the peat moss is just antifreeze, also for antifreeze. I use just your regular old table salt. Can't beat it. It's cheap. It's easy. We gotta clean all this grass up, get it out of the way, and we'll put it back here for our backing. The reason you have a backing is to keep the animals on this front side of the trap, the trap side of your dirt hole. Now I'm just working this pan back and forth, making sure it's good and loose. There it is. Next, we're gonna take auger and clean our dirt hole out. Marty then drills a hole to place the lure in. Then he digs a shallow hole to set the trap in to help hide it and hold it in place. Marty packs dirt around the trap to make sure it won't move. He then hides it with some dead grass to make it look natural. Foxes are very smart and know their surroundings. If Marty doesn't pay attention to every detail, a fox will sense or smell something is wrong and stay away from this set. Fortunately, Marty has been doing this for a while, so I don't think he'll have any trouble. Jason and Marty are not even close to being done. They head off to the next set and it looks like they have a nice coyote in this one. This portion of Trapping Across America is brought to you by F&T Fur Harvester's Trading Post. Now that we've caught this young coyote here, always excited to reset a remake. I never pulled a trap. I mean, with all that smell, you never know what you're going to catch. That coyote has left all sorts of scent, and if any scent maker could ever bottle that scent up, it would be so easy to catch them, because man, they just hit. I had, after I caught that double, I had a coon the next day, great big old coon. Today I got the coyote, so remakes definitely do help you catch. It is kind of gross, but I do carry a jar of coyote scat. Anytime I find a good pile of coyote scat, if I catch a, catch a coyote and it left a lot like this one here did, I always pick it up. It's it's absolutely magic. They will not step on, for whatever reason, they will not step on turds. But man, it really draws them into a set. And in fact, over here I have a set that Mark June taught me called a three poop set, and it's a curiosity set. If you got some coyotes that have been heavily trapped or heavily pressured, then it's not as it's not near as loud and explosive as a dirt hole looks. It's a very, very subtle set. 
very sneaky set, but I also, the other day whenever I had this, had a double, it was caught on a three -pointer. So it's a very, very sneaky and very, very effective set. On his way to the next spot, Marty sees an area where he wants to set up a new trap to possibly catch a bobcat. Okay guys, what we found here, we just set that crossing right, I mean not even, 40 yards away from where we are. We was driving along the edge of this field and this spot here kind of caught my eyes. So what bobcats do, bobcats are just like a house cat. You know, you have a house cat and you have a litter box. They bury their, their scat. I wasn't quite sure about this one, so I smelled it. And sure enough, it smells like an old tomcat. You know how an old tomcat will spray and you, ca you cannot get that smell out. This right here is a bobcat toilet. You can see where he's buried his scat. Went to the bathroom here and he's buried his scat. In fact, I can almost see a little pad print right there. So we're gonna set this. If you ever find a bobcat toilet, make sure you set it. It's an absolutely killer spot. They come back every time to that same toilet. Usually a bobcat, if he's around a certain area, he'll have multiple toilets, but he's not like a coyote, you know. He doesn't drop one in every single spot he goes to. He doesn't mark his territory. This is where he marks his territory in each one of these little toilets. If you can find one of these, they're absolutely gold. The next trap the boys check seems to have a raccoon in it. All right, guys, got a big old coon. You know, I'm telling you, setting these dog proofs along your canine line, it'll really save you a lot of headache. This is the spot, there's an old pond over here, creek down there, there's a heck of a trail coming right through here. I mean, you can see it right over there. The other day, I had a bobcat up here, and a coon down here, and I think a coon over there. You know, if I hadn't set these dog proofs, I'd have never caught that cat. So definitely don't be afraid to set some dog, dog proofs and save yourself some headache later on down the line. They get the trap reset and head to the next spot to see what's there. And it looks like they got another coyote. There we go, guys. Another good prime Missouri coyote. He's got some, quite a bit of white on him. He's a really, really pretty coyote. But man, look at the guard hairs. So he's not missing a single one. I don't think he's near as happy to see us as we are to see him. Look at his teeth. Mm -hmm. Marty dispatches the coyote and gets to work, making a reset. There are more wild fur bears in the United States today than there was 100 years ago, thanks to the conservation efforts from trappers. If I'm trapping coyotes and I don't want to set any coon traps or I don't have any, come away from the edge of the woods about 10 foot, kind of like I did here. All your little critters like your coons, stuff like that, they're going to be falling the edge. These coyotes and bobcats are out here a little bit farther. You might not think it helps. I, I certainly do. Now we move on to the next day. Jason and Marty have picked up some helpers along the way. It looks like the first set of the day has a coyote in it. We got our helpers with us this morning. Uh, so we'll put them to work remaking this coyote set. Millions of North Americans depend on fur harvesting for their livelihood. These people have a vested interest in protecting the natural environment. It's never too early to teach the youth of America about trapping, but more importantly, about how conservation and a trapper's important part of the process.
Marty and Jason are loving the fact that they have help today. It's great seeing kids wanting to learn the art of trapping. Now the team roll up on another raccoon. The raccoon's most distinctive features are its multi-purpose front paws, its facial mask, and its striped tail. Raccoons are noted for their intelligence. Studies show they're able to remember the solution to tasks for up to three years. They're off to another trap for the kids to help with, and it looks like another raccoon for this hard-working crew. Raccoons are very adaptable, so they live in a wide range of climates and habitats. Done checking traps this morning with Marty. We got that coyote and fox. We set out a few more bobcat traps. But his buddy Travis called, said he had a coyote and a foothold. We're gonna run over there, take a look at that coyote, and maybe get a tip or two from uh, Travis. Jason and Marty meet up with Travis to give him a hand with the coyote. So we're out here with Travis, uh, Marty's buddy. Called us this morning, got this nice coyote. A uh, good front foot catch. You got this on a dirt hole. Oh, uh, actually, we had uh, a little cedar tree I had put up right here, which you can't see it now. And uh, we just had it stuck in the ground and put this trap in front of it. After removing the coyote, Travis remakes this set in hopes of catching something else in it. Regulated trapping can help to prevent overpopulation, the spread of rabies, sarcoptic mange, and other diseases that threaten not only wildlife, but also livestock, pets, and humans. That and the second you stop learning about trapping, that's the second you start hurting yourself. So, yeah, but it's always fun. It's always fun to learn new stuff and talk to people. So that's why we go to these trapping conventions and there's a lot of states that are uh, trying to ban trapping. So maybe this will get people yeah, interested in it and learn something. As the sun is setting, Jason and Marty roll up on the last set for the day. It looks like they have an opossum in this one. I think someone might be playing possum. Opossum's most famous defense mechanism is playing possum, similar to playing dead. However, the mechanism isn't the opossum's pretending. It's actually an involuntary reaction, a lot like fainting. That causes the opossums to seize up. Traps can be broken down into three basic types. 
footholds, body grips, and hunting snares. Each is distinct from the others, and it has its own unique purpose on the trap line. Trapping Across America is brought to you by Sawmill Creek Bait and Lures, Trapping Girl Link, F&T Fur Harvesters Trading Post, J3 Outdoors, Element Outdoors, Revealed Trail Cameras, High Country Control, and Tacticam. All right, we've been out here with Marty Howley for the last three days. We've caught several coyote, a couple red fox, a lot of coon, possum. I'm glad that Bob Cass and Kyle didn't mess up that possum. Yeah, today. yeah, I'd hate for that to happen. You know, we've had a great time. Uh, Northeast Missouri, just can't thank you enough. Not a problem, not a problem. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah, it's been a blast. Uh, I would call it a successful successful weekend. Oh yeah. It was a good time with good people and had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And you caught your record in Red Fox. Yeah, yeah. For a place that I'm doesn't not... have Red Fox, you caught yeah. two in three days. Yeah. Yep, I didn't think there's any Red Fox around, or not very many of them anyway. There so. might not be now. Yeah, yeah, we might have taken them out. Anyway, thanks for a great time again. No problem, it's been a good time. Yep, we're out of here. Responsible trappers make full use of fur bears they harvest. The primary value of a pelt is for clothing. It's also used for human food, pet food, glands, and fertilizer. Making the most of what you catch is one of the many responsibilities that come with trap. in loving memory of Jax.
so 